thrust and pressure. Let's see with the practical examples how we experience and how we can explain the thrust and pressure. Like we see in many cases which are in our daily life like a school boy carrying a school bag and if it has let's say large straps on the shoulder and narrow straps for the shoulders on the back. What is it we notice? When it is large straps, the boy feels much comfortable and there won't be much pressure on his shoulders and has he is comfortable. Whereas when the straps of the school bag is narrow, then the pressure will be higher on his shoulders and so he gets shoulder pain. This is something we see in our daily life. Something like the sharp knife. Why the knife edge is sharp? Or a needle, tip of the needle is sharp. The tips sharp means that it is projecting a small area. What does it mean? The force of our hand when we are using the needle or when we are pressing something with the knife, the force of our hand falls on a very small area. So when the force falls on the small area, then it gives you a large pressure. So the effects will be much better. So the needle goes through the cloth and the sharp knife pierces through whatever we wanted it to do. All that happens because of large pressure which is given by the higher force. And this is happening because of the small area on which the force is exerted. So like this there are many examples, like for example, a man is walking then standing. Let's say when the man is walking, what happens? The force is on one foot. Whereas when the man is standing, what happens? The force is on both feet. So here, the smaller area compared to here, larger area. So what happens when it is smaller area, you get higher the pressure and larger area, lesser the pressure. So there is a difference of pressure, force that is acting based on the area, man, when man is walking, when man is standing. So similarly, the army trucks have got, which are very, very high mass, but they can rest on a chain. So it, it goes under the same concept. A camel runs in a desert. Think why and how. All this is happening because of the net force is acting in a particular direction. And we will know what is that particular direction. It's generally perpendicular to the surface. Let's say there is a bulletin board and somebody is trying to press a drawing pin on it. So, we try to press this pin with a thumb. To press, we can do in two ways. One is use the thumb and press the paper or use thumb but push with a pin. Now, when we use thumb to press the paper onto the board, 
let's say there is a paper which is being this is the paper this is the pen and we just use the thumb to press the paper it will not go in because what happens it is seeing higher surface area whereas push the paper with the pin it will see smaller surface area so what happens because of which so pressing a drawing pin on a bulletin board when you press it down with the thumb the force acts on this head of the pin so by doing this force acts on the head of the pin very important to understand this concept so this gives rise to the force perpendicular to the surface area of the board because we are pressing the pin on head of the pin with our thumb and it acts perpendicular to the surface area of the board so what happens actually this force of the surface area of the board that perpendicular force acts on the tip of the pin because there is always an action and reaction so when we are pressing the drawing pin with our thumb onto the board there is a perpendicular force from the surface area of the board that is acting on the tip of the pin which is a very very small area so the effect is higher now take another example where the man stands on the sand and man lying on the sand what happens when he stands on the sand his feet goes deeper into the sand to be precise we can say his feet goes not he whereas when he is lying on the sand the body does not go too deep into the sand that we observe body not too deep into the sand why we can say when he is lying on the sand what happens the surface area is much higher because the area of the body now in both the cases the weight is the force that is acting is the weight of the body in both cases the force that is acting is weight of the body now the weight of the body is acting vertically downwards in both cases the weight of the body acts vertically downwards so the effect of this is in the loose sand this weight of the body in this case sees only the feet the area of the feet so here it sees area of feet whereas here his it sees area of body which is larger compared to area of the feet and because of which the effect of a force is different so we can conclude that the effects are different even if the force is the same because the weight of the body when the man is lying down or standing is the same but effects are different when he is standing he goes deeper into the sand whereas when he is lying down 
he does not go deeper into the sand because the areas are different. Force is the same because the weights are same. So we say that the effects of a force depends on the area of the object on which it acts. Because the effect of the force when man is standing is different from effect of the force when man is lying down, though the force is same. So now we will define what is thrust, the force acting on an object perpendicular to the surface is called thrust. Now we saw in the example of man standing and man lying on the sand, it is acting perpendicular from the sand, the force is acting perpendicular to the object, to the surface and the, that is why when the surface area is larger and smaller has a lot of significance and it creates the effects in a different way. Now this thrust per unit area is called pressure. So thrust and pressure are very closely related because thrust gives you the definition of perpendicular force to the surface whereas pressure talks of the area. So on large area or small area, what is the area on which this thrust is acting on? So based on that, the effects are created. So that is pressure. So the unit of thrust is Newton, which is also represented as N. The SI units of pressure is, is Newton per meter square because it is thrust by area. So, the equation for pressure is thrust by area which is in units Newton by meter square which is also called as Pascal as a honor to a great scientist Pascal for the pressure it's given as Pascal as the unit which is also represented as Pa PA. To understand this better let's see a problem. A rectangular wooden block has mass of 4 kg. The length, breadth and height of this wooden block are 50 cm, 25 cm and 10 cm respectively. Find the pressure on the table top. In two cases. In the first case, when the wooden block is kept with its surface measuring 50 cm, 25 cm on the table and when it is kept with 25 cm and 10 cm on the table. Basically, what he is saying is, for that wooden block with the different dimensions, different surface areas, how this pressure changes. Because we have seen in the definitions of pressure and thrust that surface area has a lot of meaning. So, let us understand by drawing the figure. So, this is 50 centimeter and this is this is 25 centimeter and this is in the case A and in case B this is standing vertically basically in our language horizontal and vertical we say. So in this case it's standing on 25 centimeter and 10 centimeter. Now let's see before going into these bits what is given. Given data is we know the mass of the wooden block m is equal to 4 kg and also we know g acceleration due to gravity though it is 9.8 meter per second square for a calculation purpose we can use it as 10 meter per second square. So the weight of the wooden block now will be weight w is m into g which is 4 into 10 40 newton we know weight of the wooden block 
Now let's go to the bit A. So we need to find the pressure. How we define the pressure on the find the pressure on the tabletop by this wooden block when it is placed on the surface 50 by 25. Pressure is defined as force by area. Now in this case force is weight of the wooden block by area. Now the weight is 40 Newton and the area is 50 into 25. It is a rectangular block so it is length into breadth. So 50 into 25. But the thing is the dimensions are in centimeter. So we need to convert this into meter. So what happens? Centimeter into meter then it becomes 50 centimeter become 50 by 100 and 25 centimeter become 25 by 100. So on calculating force 52. So that 2 into 4 8 will go up. It becomes 320 Newton per meter square or 320 power. So the pressure in the first case where the table is kept on its surface 50 centimeter by 25 centimeter is 320 pa. Now in the case of B, here the area becomes 25 into 10 which is nothing but 250 by 10 to the power 4 meter. So pressure in this case will be force by area which is weight by area and weight is 40 into 1 by area. So this becomes reverse. So 10 to the power 4 by 250. So which will give rise to 1600 Newton per meter square or 1600 pa. So here the pressure is 1600. So we understand that the area is higher, 50 by 25, the pressure is 320 pa, whereas the area is smaller, the pressure is 1600 pa. So this shows, this particular example gives us a clear understanding on how the pressure depends on the area, even if the weight or the force is the same.